guys, it's Anne. Yes, you've got me again. That's okay. Now we're gonna switch it up just a little this time, just to keep us on our toes. So I want everybody on your feet, and are you ready for the memory verse? Let's go. Okay, it's time for our memory verse. Here we go. Be strong, look at those big muscles in the Lord and in the power like a lightning bolt of his might. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Okay, let's do it one more time. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Get those muscles going. Ephesians 6 verse 10. You guys have got it. Great job on the memory verse. So, does anyone know what day it is today? Sunday? 23rd of May? Oh, I heard someone shout, it's your birthday. Happy birthday if it's your birthday today. Yes, it may be all of those things, but it's also Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday? What's that? It's not Christmas, Easter? Well, I'm glad you asked because you might be wondering why we're doing Pentecost Sunday when we're right in the middle of Armour of God and what that has to do with you. So grab your Bibles. I'm going to grab mine. And no, we're not going to turn to Ephesians this week. We're going to go to Acts 1, verse 4 and 5. So you can see how far Acts is in the New Testament and it's very early on in the New Testament. So we've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. So not nearly as far as Ephesians. All right, let's have a little read, shall we? Once when Jesus was eating with them, he told them not to leave Jerusalem. Jesus said, the Father has made you a promise which I told you about before. Wait here to receive this promise. John baptized people with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is telling his disciples to wait for a promise. Now, do you like waiting? Do you like waiting in line? Do you like waiting for dinner? Mom, is it ready yet? Do you like waiting your turn for a ride? Do you like waiting for Christmas? It's like 20 more days. Maybe you don't like waiting for your birthday either. But the disciples have been told to wait for a promise. I wonder what they were doing whilst they were waiting. What do you do when you wait? Do you fidget? Yeah, probably, I fidget a lot. Do you think they were maybe wondering how long they'd have to wait for? Jesus didn't say. Maybe they wrote a song whilst they were waiting. Maybe they played a few games of ping pong. Let's flick over to Acts 2 verse 1, which is just over the page in my Bible, and it tells us where they were on one particular day. Let's have a look. So moving from Acts 1 to Acts 2, here we go. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, that's really quick, right? Suddenly, a noise came from heaven. It sounded like a strong wind blowing. This noise filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw something that looked like flames of fire. The flames separated and stood over each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in different languages. The Holy Spirit was giving them the power to speak these languages. Whoa, what just happened? Okay, that just sounds weird, right? So flames of fire on their heads? They could suddenly speak in other languages. Do you learn a language at school? Maybe, I don't know, Chinese or Spanish. But this is a language they'd never been taught. So they hadn't done five years at school. Suddenly, the Bible tells us, suddenly, they're speaking in other languages. 
In the Bible, it often talks about a tongue of fire. Do you think it looks like this? No, <laughs> that's not right. What happened, the Bible tells us, was the flames all separated and everyone had a flame on their heads, a bit more like this. And that's why our picture of what it is to receive the Holy Spirit is that He fills us, not with natural fire, that would hurt, but with God's fire. So I wonder what you think about actual fire and the thought of those flames on the people's heads. Perhaps some of you are afraid of fire. You know, God wants to take away your fear. But also sometimes when we talk about things and we understand what something's there for and what to do with it, then it helps us not to be afraid of it any longer, but actually to love it. Have you ever been camping and it's been cold and you've sat around a fire? Oh, it's so warming, right? Perhaps you've taken sticks and put marshmallows on them and cooked marshmallows. Or maybe you've wrapped bananas with chocolate buttons and put them with foil around them and stuck them in the fire. Oh, it melts and it tastes so good. Fire gives us warmth and power. And the Holy Spirit is just the same. He heats us up for Jesus and fills us with God's power. So the other week we talked about the first bit of armor, the belt of truth. And having truth is a bit like this. Can you see the meat and the veggies? Anyone coming to dinner at mine and wanna eat this just as it is? Tasty, right? Hmm, maybe not. The meat and the veggies are great, but they're all raw. But if we add fire and cook it through, oh yeah, now that looks better. Now do you wanna come for dinner? So the Holy Spirit helps us apply God's truth, which is a bit like the meat and veggies, into our lives, it warms it up and helps us to understand God's word and gives us the power to live that word out. Now we talked about being afraid of fire earlier and maybe you've seen the Holy Spirit move in church. Maybe you've seen him move on your parents. Maybe you felt a bit strange when you've been in the presence of God and you've been afraid because you've not quite understood what was happening. You might have seen someone fall down or people speak in other languages. We, we can call it speaking in tongues. Or maybe someone has given a picture or a prophecy. But when we know the Holy Spirit and what He does, those things don't become scary anymore. We see God's power coming through what's happening. Perhaps you read the Bible but struggle to get it or, or see how to live it. Perhaps you feel you haven't got the power to live as you know God wants you to. Perhaps you weren't quite brave enough to pray for someone to get healed. But that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. So, today, we're gonna pray. And if you wanna get filled up with power and God's fire, just put your hand up right now, whether you're at home whether you're in one of our kids' rooms, put your hand up. And let's just shut your eyes a minute. And right now, Holy Spirit, we just pray for you to come upon every child who has put their hand up. God, maybe there's adults too who are saying me as well. I need filling again. God, thank you that you give us the Holy Spirit that is the power to live out the life that you call us to, the power to affect those around us. So God, in this moment, will your Holy Spirit just breathe, just fall, just fill.
You might feel something. You might feel hot. You might think that you can hear a wind or something blowing or feel the wind on your face. Maybe God gives you a picture right now. Maybe you just hear him speaking to you. That's the move of the Holy Spirit. Right there. Just rest in his presence. Just stay there. Maybe you feel a language bubbling up inside you. Maybe you feel like you can't stand up anymore. <laughs> Just be down on the ground. Just feel that Holy Spirit moving, touching your life, filling you with power that you would know what God says in a moment. That there would be something about the way that you are that touches other people's lives. That you'll dare to, to pray for someone and bring healing. Dare to sit with someone and say, but I know God and he loves you. Don't rush out of this moment. Don't rush. And God, right now we also pray for those who have been afraid of fire in the natural. Maybe they've seen a bushfire or seen pictures of it. Maybe they've known someone who got hurt with fire. God, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would touch those memories and those thoughts and set them free. Wow, guys, just hold that moment. Don't rush off from this. We're just going to say amen, which means we agree to that which we've prayed. And I'm gonna leave you and say goodbye until next time. But you just spend time now in the presence of God. And I'll see you another time.